Welcome to Extra Dosing. We're here to recap the Succession finale, finale, finale. in the last two episodes. Or when was the last time we recorded yeah, Succession? Last two yeah, last two episodes uh, with Mad Dog and Mackenzie, as yeah. always. So last one. What I think. First off, I think this is one of the best. They wrapped it up very nicely. I've been hearing mixed reviews. I think this is the only way it could have ended. Also, just spoiler city. But oh yes. Like, yeah. I think it ended as well as it possibly could have and left the door open because again like I don't think they succession is like too smart of a show for them to be like Shiv did this and then Tom's gonna do this like they left the door open just enough for you to like yeah have your own thoughts on it as we've seen in other HBO shows like I mean Sopranos Game of Thrones it's very hard to end a show Lost is another but like right. when you have good shows the end it's easy to make a good show if you like don't really deliver at the end because you can have all this build up to something that sort of falls flat mm -hmm. or you can just take like you know Tony Soprano dying at the end of the Sopranos or not dying or just going black leaves an open ended question and then there's room for discussion yeah. Game of Thrones was pretty anticlimactic it was like we're gonna make I don't even remember what his name is because he was such a important character but I didn't unimportant watch. character uh, the guy that uh, Hodor was carrying around the whole time but it's hard to end a good series, and this sort of kind of made it. It gave a definitive ending, and mm -hmm. sort of just you know who wins. It was more of a layup. It was more of a layup of an ending, and sort of gave closure to some ideas, but not to others. I would have been pissed if they didn't, which they never would have done. The whole point of the sh the, the shows literally called Succession, but if they were just like, and the board votes and like like cut it. Yeah, I I would have been really upset. Yeah, like that's a lazy ending. That's right. a cop out. Right, but I. I really liked the ending. I was so it was an hour and a half. The first hour, I'm like, oh, everyone's gonna win. We're all we're making a meal for for a king. Like, oh my god, everyone's gonna get what they want. And then like Kendall's gonna take over. Like this is all gonna work out how we want it to. Obviously, it's a tragedy and it's not. But the last thirty minutes was like bitch slap, bitch slap, punch, yeah. boom, uh, fuck you. Like the last thirty minutes yeah. was a whirlwind. Of an ending. I thought that they were going to kill Kendall. So Ke Same. in several scenes, I actually was like, I thought they were going to uh, do something with him in the water to kill him. I, I thought they were going to poison the meal fit for the king. There was many times I thought that they were going to try to kill him. So, of course, I listened to the podcast episode. Mm -hmm. um, and Jeremy Strong, who plays Kendall, was the guest on it. And he said that they took a ton of takes of him sitting in Battery Park and one of the takes, he said he climbs over the barrier into the Hudson oh. and Colin, the bodyguard, yeah. comes and grabs him. And he was like, I think that he would, if given the opportunity, jump into the water. But again, that him not doing that in the final cut of the show mm. leaves that door open for like, he's metaphorically dead, whether or not he kills himself or not. Yeah. He he died that day. Also, he's uh, that actor's been uh, method acting for the whole series. Yeah, poor guy. So now he's he's got to start like living his being Real a regular. Life again. Like apparently on set, he'll like wa like he had a scene where he had to uh, ask to use the bathroom, and apparently walked on another set and just like awkwardly asked to use the bathroom as if he was in that scene. But like you've been living as your character for so many years and at the end of the last shot they shaved his head yeah i saw that to sort of signify that his he's now you know kendall roy person. is now dead and yeah. he's got to go back to being but that's got to be so weird pretending to be a different person than like going back oh my God. i can't even like imagine like he was such a serious and up mm. uptight character like mm -hmm. living your life like that like again i don't know what he's doing like on his off time obviously but like to live your life like that or even to play someone like that like i feel like you just have like your tense for like five years mm. yeah also colin stayed by was the only one who stayed by the whole time and it's like the parallel of That's logan the, yeah. walking down central park and him walking in battery park i know it, it like that i think again they leave that open i do think though that kendall whether or not he jumps or kills himself or doesn't metaphorically and for all intents and purposes like kendall Ro kendall logan roy is dead yeah whatever he becomes after we're not sure but i just don't think he'll ever fully recover from that room also i think the the greatest description 
Shiv described uh, Tom as a highly entertain- interchangeable modular part, mm. whereas Kendall described himself as I'm a cog built to fit one, one machine. machine. That was super because mm-hmm. it is it was true. Like Tom was more verse is more versatile, and Kendall was only built to be the head of right he, he's the eldest boy yeah he was that, promised that at seven that <laughs> sibling fight at the end was just so typical and you it, they said everything everyone was thinking yeah the whole time like i'm the eldest boy i deserve it it's 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 so sad too that he was like i was promised this at seven years old in bridgehampton and it's like of course he's this intense about it his whole yeah. life has been built up to this moment and it's getting taken away from yeah. him in front of his eyes and he didn't uh, and it's like i was watching i was watching it alone in my bed by myself and i was just like screaming at the computer like stop talking about the dead kid like what are you doing like you're ruining it and like yeah. it, it is but shiv's right like i can't fucking stomach being you being the ceo so why do you think she did it cuz i have i have some why do you think, theories why do you think why do i think he she switched up at yeah. the end i think I, and I was reading this. I, I took in a lot of like succession, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, like, yeah. e- everything. I think I saw someone say this, that she was acting not as a sister, but as a mother. Yes. And I think Tom being the CEO obviously puts her child in a much better financial position. Yeah. Um, And so I think she was acting as a mother and like her maternal instincts and almost acting as a mother towards Kendall. Yeah. Of like you you will you will not be good at this position this position will lead you to your own death as well like if like the pressure is too much like you'll kill yourself then so i think shiv was doing it out of her best interests i do think it was a motherly maternal decision to make so is that what you were gonna say Yeah, primal protecting her baby because her she act she was acting you know in her best interests but then she like literally started thinking of her baby like her child's best interest instead right. and i think it was almost subconscious in like why she couldn't stand him because it was you know because she's still in the picture she still has the power kind of because she's able to manipulate tom to a certain degree right and she said she's like he'll just suck the biggest dick in the room like he tom is on his own tom has no brain of his own like yeah tom is as whatever like tom does whatever people want him to do so and Matson appreciates that and uh alexander skarsgård who plays mattson uh was also in that podcast and was saying that he was like there was a subtle moment in episode nine which is logan's funeral where um shiv is talking to i think greg Mm -hmm. and saying how tom is still at the office Mm -hmm. during the funeral and mattson he's like mattson kind of takes into account like he's not at the funeral of logan roy his father-in-law his boss all of this stuff like he is really dedicated to atn and he kind of takes that and puts it away yeah and um i think there was a lot about shiv that he didn't like one he was she was a woman um and he was like yes he wanted to fuck her but i don't think that was the reason that she didn't get the job i think that Mm. i think that mattson just likes that tom is pliable yeah he and the kids are more rigid yeah he's a puppet and he's a puppet he acts you know he acts in a rational way that mattson can control whereas Mm -hmm. the other kids you know, they may have their own motives, their their idea of self legacy, whereas, mm-hmm. you know, Tom's just a mercenary. Like a mercenary of sorts in that he can be controlled. Also, Greg, Greg's role at the end, love that. The him putting the sticker on his head, yeah. which is like I saw another thing, what's like a metaphorical like target on your head. Yeah. Um which I didn't think Greg was gonna come out like that in the end. I thought I thought Tom was gonna be like, Fuck you, I'm CEO now, like you're done to me. I'm sh- kind of shocked that he saved greg from his own demise Well, because he knows he can control greg because greg was the only guy that he could like you know tom was the you know omega male like the bottom of the ladder everyone was just shitting on him uh and i know that's greg then greg showed up and he was like oh like i'm i'm gonna shit on him right it's like hazing yeah yeah yeah. i I can (laughs) shit on him because he, he doesn't outrank me and now he's like i'm still gonna keep you around to just shit on you right i i i just i think that tom and i i think i said it on this podcast i predicted tom to be the ceo Mm -hmm. just because of the way i just think that there was no other way for it to end i really think that shiv shiv doesn't i think shiv and roman both didn't want to be ceo they just felt like they wanted like they should want to 
Um, at least that's what I thought. And then um, Roman just obviously would crumble under the pressure. Yeah. And then Kendall, I think it's just it's too lock and it's just too easy to have Kendall do it. And I think Tom was just pliable enough and kind of just poked his head in the right places yeah. enough to get on people's good sides, even though he sucks. Mm. I love Tom, but like he sucks, obviously, mm. and isn't strong. Mm. But I, I think he just did the right things. He played it right. Yeah. He, uh, I was sort of hoping Greg would end up the CEO in a funny way and he I sort of feel like in the future he actually still could be in play yeah but again I just don't think I don't think that Greg had enough of a role this season in particular to then out of the dark horses be him and then I also just think at the end of the day and like Jesse Armstrong the creator and Mark Mylod who's the main director have been saying this a lot it's like it's a tragedy yeah and Greg would be the comedic end Mm -hmm. but it's not a it's it's a funny show it's not a comedy Mm. so i just think it it couldn't have been greg i think it could have only been tom because it rubs enough people the wrong way and when the the last shot of tom and shiv hold uh, holding hands quote unquote in the car i almost puked like i am a shiv girl Mm -hmm. and seeing her become the wife hurts it hurts a lot it's like it's a power dynamic had changed like it sucks because like this whole time again for four seasons Shiv has always played her hand to be above Tom and Mm -hmm. I mean even Logan says it in the first season like you're marrying a man fathoms beneath you because you don't want to risk being hurt or Mm -hmm. betrayed and in the end to have that completely flop on her face like Shiv took the fattest L and I'm so (laughs) sad because I love her and I I feel like I understand Shiv because like I just feel like I do and everyone's like oh, of course you're a shift girl yeah of course i'm a shift girl like duh but yeah. her taking like i think kendall took the biggest l just because he was primed and and he was low and groomed from day one but i think shift took a very close second just because yeah. like her becoming the wife her becoming caroline basically mm-hmm. being the emotionally distant mother with the ceo father it's just really fucking tough to watch and it's like like i think shiv put in she changed her life the most to try to be ceo like again like she wasn't working at waystar Mm -hmm. in the first season and so she changed her life i think the most to try to fit into this mold and for it to just backfire in her face so bad and and then it leaves you up for discussion like do you think tom and shiv are going to stay together well with the kid with the kid and with the ceo i almost saw her as like you know she acted on her child's best interest and literally just imprisoned herself i know it sucks i know (laughs) i just like it's it's her worst nightmare is being this the wife to the powerful ceo also you know it's very interesting uh remember when they were watching that virtual reality video of being at dinner with oh yeah and literally you just saw all the kids realizing that uh, they never saw that side of their father. Right. And, and like Carrie hanging on him. Yeah. I know. And that made me cry a little bit. I was sad about that. It, it, it's just, I think that made them upset for the man that they didn't know in yeah. Logan. Like, yeah. again, they knew the song. They like, But that could have, he could have been something so different than what he ended up being. Yeah. Um, and, and and we didn't talk about the funeral uh, episode, but, like, I think that shows in, like, their eulogies as well of, like, Shiv being, like, he was hard on women. But when you, you know, when you got caught in his light, it was warm. Like, they, all of the kids constantly were just vying for that, like, 15 minutes in the sun. And, mm. and that's what they kept chasing. It was like a drug. Yeah. And... That and then same with the CEO position, like they were chasing it like a drug, and I don't even really know if if they wanted it, no, or if they would be good at it. Like I don't think Tom's gonna be good at it, but but Matson is just gonna do what yeah. like whatever he wants. Kendall had completely transformed into Logan after his death. That was something I noticed from the yeah. funeral episode. Like yeah, oh totally. Like Kendall just like opening up Roman's wounds, like mm-hmm. with a hug, like loving you but like hurting you. Yeah. And again, like in Kendall's eulogy, 
it makes so many parallels like Kendall in seasons like one two and then beginning of ish three or one two three in the beginning of four sorry and then him being like I never want to be you I hate you he tries to take him under in season two and then for only in his eulogy to be like my god I hope he's in me like it's yeah. it's just like it's so sad to see that I think they're I think they mourn the man that they wish he was rather yeah. than who he actually was what do you think Connor how Connor ends up because he's my favorite <laughs> I, love I love I love, I love Willa yeah I, I love, love Willa Connor and the uh Logan's brother uh, Ewan who, Ewan who spoke at the yeah his the, eulogy was crazy yeah like just showing like how Logan Roy was created yeah and with Rose the sister that got yeah. polio which I don't really know how polio works is it contagious like that not really but they told him that he got her sick and killed her so growing up you no know, like thinking that you killed your sister is pretty tough yeah um wait what was your question sorry i what happened to connor oh i think connor well and you also don't know what happened to mankin in the election yeah so i think if mankin wins or if the um court allows him to win basically yeah i think connor goes to slovenia and they do whatever the, they're trying to do to the townhouse. Yeah. Um, him and Willa. And then Willa becomes a playwright again. So I think he just goes to Slovenia and lives out this like fake banana land fantasy that he's doing something in politics. Yeah. Because Connor Roy was interested from in politics from a very young age. And I think he just kind of like basks in the glory of the money and hmm. pretends that he's a politician. <laughs> Willa being like... Uh like yeah you you i'll stay at the townhouse right and you'll be there and you'll you'll be there yeah and then when they were like well jared something happened with the wisconsin mm -hmm. results and, and she was like well if the results don't go through i think you'll just get to spend so much time together and willow's like fuck me <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i don't know i think i think he just becomes this fake politics guy kind of like his he like plays fake plays politics i mean what did you think mm. uh i think just that i think it's going to end up that their marriage is going to break up because i have a feeling I mean, duh <laughs> i wish they'd wrap it up with menken not winning because uh the votes for connor uh screwed him over i know that would have been funny yeah and then have him not be able to go to slovenia and have to you know then willa being like shit i have to do this right i i i think connor's fun to like theorize about because it kind of doesn't make a difference yeah it's like I want the best for Connor because why not? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um and then like it's 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 sad that we don't get the like perfectly wrapped up with the bow right. ending, but that's just like I think we all want that cuz I just want to know what I, I as the series was coming to an end and that season 4 was coming to an end, I realized that like this I think was the best decision like to end it at 4 and not drag it out, but you could you could just make that show 100 seasons. Yeah. I mean, we could talk about Tom being in charge and then, you know, uh, what happens to him in the company and how he gets right. maybe like kicked out for something and then Greg takes over. Right. Which is my <laughs> I just think, I just think that there's so many theories and not even theories like no, oh, that, like, you know, oh, what, oh, what if I think it's just like these people are so broken and we're so tied to this result and to have it basically backlash so badly that none of them win so tom is I, again i don't watch the show but tom is married in and now he's in charge of yeah. everything yeah. he the one scene so i like watched part of it with my dad with like no context of what was going on they were like in the house like tagging what they wanted from the right. apartment yeah and she was like fuck you tom and i was confused because i had seen the photo of them holding hands prior so i was like wait i thought she was in a relationship with this guy yeah. she is she was just upset yeah. at the moment because she didn't know and he told her well because yeah. she so shiv was slated to be the ceo yeah and so basically matson lied to her and then oh uh, was then, gonna bring tom, was gonna bring tom in as a ceo my other question is why did he bring greg into the bathroom and blame him because greg judas he betrayed he was a judas so <laughs> oh okay, okay so greg found out because he was Google translating the Swedish conversation that Matson and Oscar were having. Got it. Okay. So then Greg told Tom that 
Tom or Greg told sorry Kendall that Matson's leading Shiv on. Kendall tells Shiv. Shiv freaks out on Tom. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tom then freaks out on Greg because he knows that's where the Got information it. came okay, from. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So he was pissed because he was being a Judas. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he was like, why the fuck would you say that? Like, why would you say anything? Right. Which I don't know why Greg was the one that told Kendall. Because I don't know what that really does for him in a positive way. Um, it solidifies. Uh, I think he thought that he was going to get axed. Because remember, Tom was like, well, you're going to get, they're going to ax your salary. Right. He was acting out of self-interest. Right. Which, I mean, yeah. I, I. As, as a shiv girl my heart is broken and it's it's really sad i just really think that this was the best way to end the show and i really think that everyone ended in what they deserved and i think like roman ending up at the bar and he was drinking a martini like that jerry would drink yeah. i think roman's gonna end up the most okay he kind of had that smirk on his face i think roman can find worth outside of being ceo more than the other two can i thought that was sort of alluding to like him overdosing on pills what (laughs) did anyone else pick up on he was using pills the whole time well they were all like doing drugs the whole time though yeah (laughs) i i I think roman again out of all of them will be able to find the most self-worth from just being rich yeah I think, again, we can theorize about that all day, but I think Kendall obviously is dead in the water. Shiv, it will kill her to be the wife. Roman has less ties Mm. to it, in my opinion. And so I think that Roman, again, is obviously devastated, but I think he will be able to kind of do something with himself Mm. Yeah, that doesn't involve suicide, suicide, basically. There is a fan theory that the whole thing was based on King Lear. Yeah, that's a yeah. that's been made before that King King Lear and something another Shakespeare play. I wasn't a Shakespeare girl growing up, but King Lear is like the main. That's why people thought, um, like, you can kind of base King Lear off of Kendall. Yeah. So Edgar. Ba- so whatever. King Lear ends with all three children dying in the kingdom. Uh, going to the husband of Lear's eldest child who spends most of the time disguised as a beggar named poor Tom. Yeah. Hmm. So here we King are. Lear, the story times a flat circle. Every story has been told before. <laughs> do you think again, just a theory, do you think Shiv will have a role in the company since Tom's the CEO? I think she's going to be a mother. A, you think Shiv's going to be a stay at home mom? <laughs> I don't know. I think that was what was implied. Like she's now has to be a, the good wife. I know it sucks. Yeah, it's like to- it's like the it she's sucks. Been neutered, literally. Yeah, like that. Just the shot with the holding hands. I, I like shivers were sent down my spine. It was crazy. <laughs> also, uh, fun fact: the shirt that Roman was wearing. Oh yeah, I saw this. Yeah, was the least expensive uh, piece of article of clothing in the entire. Uh, show show though one of him when they were yeah. in the caribbean you know how people like say this is you know kendall roy style like a 500 hundred dollar hat that's just a blank hat and like so when they were there he was wearing a walmart t-shirt <laughs> oh really with stripes it was like from the kids section yeah that's like funny. people found it was it. an ugly shirt yeah that is funny yeah that was yeah i saw that i was like that's interesting huh mm. interesting i thought like that scene where um, Kendall, Roman, and Shiv were making the meal fit for a king. I was like getting giddy. I was smiling by myself watching I that. Kill him? No. I was just I, yeah, I watched to, like, that part slip. too. And then they were like, "Should we murder him?" Right. Yeah. I got nervous. Like that's when I like I was having so much fun watching it, like in the moment. And then I was like, oh. "Like good things don't happen to these people in the show. Like this yeah. is gonna turn bad real quick." And mm. I think I think and he was licking Peter's cheese. Like I just thought it was a nice moment. Like yeah. like. It was Childlike. my favorite scene in the whole show, I think. I really think it was just, like, really, really fun to see them in this, like, childlike, innocent state. And... Juxtaposed with the childlike fight at the end. Right. Exactly. I thought fucking Kendall was going to kill Roman at the end when he was, like, putting his thumbs in his eyes. I was like, oh, my God, this is, like, um, Pedro yeah. Pascal in Game of Thrones, like, how yeah. he dies. Yeah. Like, um, 
that was intense and then i saw something being like kendall hurting roman in the same way that like roman was the victim of the vis- the physical abuse from uh logan mm-hmm. like kendall hurting roman the way that logan would is just another parallel like mm. it's and it's just like the amount of parallels and i feel like that's like just such a like rhetorical word like parallel this parallel that like yeah the amount of callbacks that you can make on this show yeah. and little details is actually insane for a show about people like talking and having conversations in random rooms. Yeah. Like there's, it's not like there's like action and killing, and blah, 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 but it's the amount of detail that they put into pretty much every shot mm-hmm. is remarkable. Like it, it is a near perfect TV show. I think I'm going to go, I think back and binge it now to see everything work itself mm-hmm. out. I know mm. I have to start it. Oh, it's so good. Even though now I, I know I feel know. bad. Now you know, but no, it's fine. I mean, my dad was literally watching it when I was home, so it was like, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna watch this. But I feel like it will, it would still be fine going back to watch it, even though. Yeah, because I know. it's like it's just. Yeah, it's almost. I want to rewatch it and look for like no, yeah, yeah like no right. Easter eggs. Yeah, because how Tom switches how he acts after becoming CEO is insane. Like he just immediately is like. He's been, you know, kowtowing and tail between legs. Right. But now he only has to be, like, subservient to one person. And that's Madsen. Right. I like. And I and I fu- I think I fucking called it on the show too, where he was not using the Apple products. Did yeah. I say that here? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I think that's why he's gonna be the CEO. Yeah. Also, <laughs> was Shiv at was Sarah Snook actually pregnant? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, the actress? Yeah, was? she posted a picture. Yeah, uh, she was with... pregnant, like, the whole time. Yeah, so Damn. did they write... Did she get pregnant, f- like... She didn't get pregnant because no. of the show. <laughs> well, I mean, they were all that would into be method, some acting. method acting. Yeah. 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 She got pregnant, and then I think they... Wrote it in? Yeah, or they had it as a plan already, and then good timing, but I think she got pregnant, and then they, like, wrote it so in. can you get pregnant? <laughs> yeah. Hey, girl. Um, She <laughs> actually had her baby yesterday. Oh, wow. Really? Congrats to Sarah Snuck. Wow. Yeah. What good time? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Um, but I, I think that they wrote it in. Yeah. But you, which but it was it played a big role. Played a big role, but like you can't even tell she's pregnant in the show. Oh yes, you can. <laughs> oh, I couldn't. Yeah. I also feel like she just wore a lot of buttoned suits. Yeah. Yeah, like bags. They use a lot. Like mm-hmm. if oh, actress is pregnant, right? Like hold a bag in front of them every scene or right. something. Yeah. But I. What are your final What are your final thoughts about the show? I'm just so sad it's over. What are we gonna do on Sunday nights? They're all terrible people. I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I think also like everyone is just a child. Everyone. I think they all like were just so emotionally stunted. Yeah, I hope Matt's like I was hoping that Matt's and the whole blood bag thing would get going. Like, like we, that would like, you'd hear up. more about that one. Yeah. I wish, or not, I wish, but I wonder how those fake numbers played out for yeah. the India numbers. Like, I wonder what that was like that ended up kind of turning into obviously nothing if mm. he, he bought the company, but, and, and it made me think kind of because they had Roman and Matson take the picture together of him signing the deal mm-hmm. makes me think like, mergers and acquisitions happen every day how many do you think are like tooth and nail like that Mm -hmm. and like just a bitch fest and then to have them take like a fun like a yay picture at the end you know what i mean yeah like i wonder how many acquisitions are that hard fought probably more than you think in real life yeah was that the selfie like around the big table that was going around? No, that, no, 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 no. There was a shot. No, 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 that was real. Oh, oh I saw oh. that. That was Stewie, the guy who plays Stewie. He just like took that yeah. picture. Oh, okay, okay. Um, which loves Stewie. Stewie. He's handsome. He switched it up. He went from be all behind you. Then he was like Tom. Let's do stuff together. Right, exactly. Well, you have to. He You're switched, on the board. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I saw he's uh he is on Broadway right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to go see him on Broadway. Yeah. He's what so shows he? I forget the name. It's like the the door swing heard around the world it's like this feminist uh play feminist i want to say norwegian play from the late 1800s that like was the first like basically 
uh, she leaves her husband and it was like the door slam heard around the world and they try to ban it because they were like, we can't have women thinking they can leave their husbands, but it was like the first step in the feminist movement. Oh. Um, I think it's called, uh, let me, what's the actor's name? Um, Arian Moyad. Arian Moyad. And so the Broadway, yeah, he like, so the Broadway show is called A Doll's House. Yeah. It was really interesting. Adult, yeah, Doll's House is like an iconic yeah. Broadway play. Yes, but then I saw him and I was like, yo, mm-hmm. <laughs> you. <laughs> I think he's like a Broadway trained guy. Yeah. I think he's a Broadway guy. Yeah, he played it really well. Also, the, the woman in it is the girl, the woman from um, Interstellar, the gin, the strawberry blonde ginger. Um, Older, yeah. Forget Julia Roberts? Julia Roberts. No. No. Wait. Uh, oh, I'm so um, bad with names. Um, 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 I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't even know if I've seen Interstellar, honestly. Amy Adams? Amy Adams, yeah. Really? Yeah. It was uh, pretty star studded. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. It's cool. Um. Yeah, no, I. The. No, the picture of them, like, signing the deal that was, like, in mm-hmm. the show. Like, I do wonder how many of those, like, mergers and acquisitions. Again, we're oh, just. Oh, they take tons of pictures and they give each other trophies i know but like i wonder how many of those are actually like that hard fought at the end yeah yeah that is there's true. definitely some bad blood also um shout out also right at the end carolina coming in being like let's get rid of hugo i was like good for you girl boss yeah and then i, I don't know what would ever come of that obviously like carolina hugo. and hugo in his freaking neck yeah <laughs> I, I, I don't want to make fun of his neck because i hope it's not like throat cancer I don't Something. think it's throat cancer. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, great wrap up to a great show. So Last of Us, Succession, what, what's next? Like well, the head. thing actually that could... sound off, sound off in the uh, yeah. Comments. What, what show do you want us to watch? Because the next, Island. Yeah, yeah, the next show, the next show that's going to be on the Sunday nine o'clock slot is The Idol, which is the weekend. And Lily Rose Depp. I've only heard bad things about it though. The, the weekend. Idol? Yeah, it's about like like Hollywood. Oh. I have no interest in watching that, so please don't make me. I also don't. I can't imagine our fan base being huge onto the weekend's show. I do not love the weekend. Like, my roommate. I don't know why. My I roommates just don't like his music, and I don't know him as a person. The way I am about Taylor Swift is the way that my roommate is about the weekend. Really? Really? Yeah, she saw him at MetLife so this past weekend or this past summer, but um, but I have no interest. But yeah, I'll watch more shows for you guys, and like maybe once I move to Chicago. I'll have a we'll put a TV well we will have a TV in the studio right live watches live watches hmm. oh yeah because I don't know what other the shows bachelor. are coming out anytime soon it's like yeah. I feel like the summer is a slow time for shows I don't want to watch Euphoria you do or you don't I don't it's just that's okay I tried to also, watch it and I was like Euphoria's I like Euphoria it. Euphoria's not gonna be back for years don't worry about that yeah. one. Um, we're gonna be dead by the time I we come like back. really bad not bad shows but like oh you like you like the, the reality TV Vanderpump. Yeah, reality TV. Oh, Vanderpump. Like, give me the Vanderpump. Oh, yeah. yeah. You guys should start watching that. Mackenzie and I have been on Vanderpump. <sighs> I've been going to Down the Hatch every week to watch I, Vanderpump. I'm not. <laughs> no, it's actually like, I mean, it's... It's a great social experiment. Yes. Yeah. Like, I started watching it because when I worked at MLB Network, I wouldn't work until 6 p.m. So I had nothing to do all day. Oh. And I just started binging it because there's like yeah. 11 seasons and it's the craziest like it's the most they're the most insane people of all time it's awesome but it's good prehistoric planet just came out with the second season interesting okay david attenborough narrates it mm, love him no, no takers okay we can move on well we'll see <laughs> give us give us exe- like give us suggestions on what you want us to yeah. watch or even just talk about cuz we can just kind of talk about anything yeah true like <laughs> no one's stopping there's us there's really no rules to this <laughs> there's absolutely no rules no. let's save the taylor it's swift it's like technically talk. billy's in charge yeah. which is like yeah which is terrifying. an odd thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> well and we got to figure out how to do these when i'm when mackenzie and i are in chicago yes oh yeah it'll be easy yeah, yeah i mean we'll just do it over it'll just be like yeah. a regular podcast. yeah i'll just like people are just gonna be walking past the macrodosing studio and being like why is madeline <laughs> alone just talking to a screen no i in all these extra dosing, once you guys go to Chicago, are going to take, they're, they're going to start getting more interesting. I'm just going to start having, like, ridiculously problematic people on, just like, <laughs> okay. just like we'll talk Love. to some crazy people. Am Let's, I still allowed to be on? Yeah, 100%. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> like, I want to talk, like, people, there's, there's a, 
bunch of guests that uh, PFT and Arian are like, ah. But you want right, it. I'm right. like, yo. We like, could get them. Like, there's a lot of guys on the Billy's list that are pretty out there. Billy's <laughs> list will be coming back. Uh, we had, did a couple episodes. I used to edit them. I'm going to try... I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to get an intern just to help me <laughs> yeah, with some season. side projects. Okay, you could. Turns out, like, the way I became an intern, you can't really do anymore. No. Right. Where I'm just like, yo, work for me for free, <laughs> right. and we'll, it'll be fun. You can just Guys, it'll be awesome, I yeah. swear. Yeah. 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 And look at us now. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah. Right. No, but we'll, so, yeah. They sh- and we- we'll also, when you'll come visit Chicago, we'll do, like, mega extra doses we can also yeah. bank some too yeah yeah true because you'll yeah. be there yeah i'm gonna i'm excited yeah i'm gonna come as much as i can good because Cause, yeah i think it'll like it's like three months away oh my god scary yeah terrifying huh so what are you what are you guys running into in your move to chicago i haven't started well i uh, yeah i haven't really i like i told myself june 1st like I've been looking, looking, like doing I've been looking some things. passively. Yes, like as for fun. But I told myself I was like after Memorial Day, I'm gonna like be se- not that I wasn't serious about it before, but Mackenzie, I was literally just about to. <laughs> I was like, I was talking to my friend the other day about it, and I was like, June first, I'm gonna like get serious because yeah. if you don't live in New York or Chicago, like, or if you don't live in New York, the housing market in New York is so weird because you can't really sign anything more than like two weeks in advance mm. so you're you can't even look like a month before. right so you're really working against the clock so the past i've lived here this is like my two-year anniversary mm. um the past two years i've been like when i've been moving i've been like freaking out and i've been down to the literal last second with chicago it's way chiller and like mm-hmm. i could i move i'm moving august i could sign on an apartment like today huh. so like it gives me a lot more leeway and so i'm gonna look june first and like probably head out there for a weekend and look at apartments with my mom and and yeah. then be done because i'm not living with anyone so it's not like i'm working with anyone else it's just like here are my taxes i'm trying to get off the summer cycle because that's summer cycle is hard so, uh, yeah summer yeah. cycle is yeah. annoying but um, yeah is august 1st summer cycle still is it still summer cycle i'm in the know, worst actually because but... it's like a little, little late i'm in the worst situation because i'm a june 1st lease yeah that's the worst that's the worst luckily my lease got extended to august 1st so I've, i'm helping my roommates out a little bit mm-hmm. but the june 1st move-in date i think is what what satan himself has made yeah so august 1st six. i'm hoping is a little bit yep six one <laughs> Um, well, six six. I think June six would be the worst. Damn. Bottoms up. Six, Actually, six. my I was I was um my birthday is six sixteen ninety six. Whoa. A lot of six. So yeah, Whoa. it's tough for me. <laughs> no, but, but I was also born on Father's Day. So oh, that's nice. Yeah, oh. that kind of negates it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm just I'm gonna start like actively looking June first, and hopefully just have it be a pretty stress free process, and then I can kind of just know, because uh, Billy, you're not a girl. Mackenzie's about to get this like I need to figure out like furniture and measurements Mm -hmm. and like a bed and like what's my aesthetic gonna be Mm -hmm. like all of that is things that are going into it now um Hmm. yeah yeah it's scary though this feels like a very adult thing for me to be doing Hmm. so I'm nervous I'm nervous about the adult part of it yeah but I'm excited to have a nice apartment that'll be fun yeah yeah like a nice live like in an elevator building People, I don't do that here. Like that'd be cool. Are you gonna conceal carry? Wasn't planning on <laughs> it. Maybe I will now. Big T, Big T. Might be. I know. Like Big T already has his apartment. Oh wow! I yeah, know. that's like, crazy. He's ahead of the game. I know. Um, but no, I don't. I don't think I'm gonna get. So don't don't use that information against me. But I don't think I'm planning on getting my conceal carry. Mm. Just say just say you do. Mm. So John Morant. Yeah, Generally, no, I got it. They know you have it on you. Yeah. yeah. But your ops. It'll definitely be interesting. I'm very nervous. I'm more nervous. I'm just nervous. Yeah. Change is scary. Change is scary. Big uh, life changes. I know. And I'm sad that, like you're not going to be with us all the time. It'll make the times I come out there more fun. Yeah. True. It's like with Arian. Like whenever Arian comes out here, like our shows are so much more fun. Yeah. And so much better. Like people just enjoy it when everybody's Exactly. In so the I studio. think when you go out there it's gonna be like that. But I also feel like 
not like an advantage, but Arian's always on Zoom. So it's not like you're missing. Like, it's not like everybody's yeah. the other and then you're the only one. Like, yeah. yeah. I it's less FOMO. It's kind of. Mm, hopefully, Arian doesn't end up moving to Chicago. But <laughs> I don't think I'm worried about that. I don't think, think I'm worried about that one. If he moves Chicago, you, you have, have to move. <laughs> hopefully, uh, he enjoys the Texas taxes too much. I think he does. Yeah. Yeah. And golfing. Yeah. And golfing all Year the time. Round, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, got and those for, going for me. Yeah, it'll be different. <laughs> I'll be back in my Midwestern roots for sure. Mm. I'll be open it up, which Hell will be yeah. fun. But no, it'll be weird. But we'll do these. I mean, these won't go away. Yeah. These are fun for me. Yeah. Yeah. The I'm in my final months of being in and around uh part of my take in, in you know, the New York office. So I'm just literally just trying to do as much like as much stuff as I can. Yeah. Before. Trying to take it all in. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like, like you'll, really you'll, leaning into bits. Yeah. <laughs> Lean. I feel like you'll end up you'll always be a part of part of my take. Like right. just naturally. So I feel like you're not gonna like it's gonna be like oh Billy's off part of my team. Right, now. we're never kind of talking thing. about like, you again. Yeah, like I, I you're, you'll know. always be a part of that show because you. I mean, I think I make the documentary, right? Yeah, you made yeah. it. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, I make the documentary when it comes out. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That might happen. I mean, like, I, there's no plans, but like, you know how they're like making all these documentaries about bands and stuff. Yeah. Like, what if one day, like a biopic on part of my team? Yeah. No, I mean that. I don't think that's far out. A like, podcast to say. biopic. Like what? Who says no? Like who in, says no? In what there, there's like like almost like a um what's that golf show on Netflix called? Full swing, full, full swing, swing, like <laughs> for podcasters. Full pod. <laughs> Dude, if they did full swing for podcasters, that'd be kind of sick. <laughs> no, but our, some like my like call is, her daddy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but like what people don't realize is that we live very mundane lives. Yeah. Comparatively. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> like like what like what would they f- actually? I don't know. Like, you live a weird life, but like that would be either way if you weren't a podcaster or not. There's like me working out and then like running with my dog and then like cleaning my backyard. Yeah. Like, yeah. like meal prepping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Like, I mean, Mackenzie and I aren't like content people, but like mm-hmm. it's not like I'm living this crazy podcast yeah. celebrity right. life. That's what a lot of people get. A lot of people when I went to college didn't get that, that like when I was on part of my take for that one summer, I was living at home and I was just like, that was my summer job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then everyone thought that I was like, had some, the coaches especially, and that kind of ruined my career. I think I was like <laughs> that's why clubbing and partying and like, yeah. like living the celebrity life. <laughs> like not, then not this is like a behind the scenes, but like I think people forget like less, more for you than us. Like I think people forget like, this is like my job. <laughs> Yeah, and like then they're like is, yelling at me yeah. on Twitter and then like, being mean to me on Twitter. I'm like, imagine if I like worked at Deloitte or something and like this was, this was my life. Like it is weird to me sometimes that I like. My job lends me to sometimes get like yelled at on the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is an odd. I, it's an odd thing. I, I've been doing a lot of reflecting on that. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes when you see like like imagine if I was yelling at you every at your job. Like Baker right. Makefield has a good quote. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. Get in the cubicle Cube and, yell at and you. be like, "Oh, you typed that wrong," or like, right, exactly. bad email." Yeah, I know. It yeah. Is, yeah, it is interesting. Like, I think people forget. Like, I, I like clock in and out, and then I go home and like I make dinner and I go. To, but like, yeah. I, like it, it is weird to me sometimes that like people have this. I don't know how we got on this, but like have this like perception of me because mm. of like. The, the job that I pay taxes on and I come to work and then yeah. you know what I mean please confirm that you pay your taxes I do I pay yes. my taxes I <laughs> I filed an extension this year and they are in the hands of my accountant mm. not to brag I have an accountant you have an accountant mm, he's a family friend that I, I, happens to be CPA <laughs> yeah. but he's still an accountant um mm. no because it was like one of those things where my dad was like you can't I can't do your taxes anymore and then he said all right one more year and I said well let's fucking go <laughs> um yeah, but it, it is weird sometimes. And I think after I was telling Mackenzie, after my, this will be out by the time my dozen match is out. Um, after my dozen match, I I want to crawl in a hole. <laughs> <laughs> no, you literally did so good. Thanks, guys. Yes, but, but the minif. If the minif fans come running, we'll, we'll <laughs> sick the macrodosians on them. Yeah, we'll right. attack back. And yeah. the Billy's listers will be the special ops. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I appreciate it. To but, take down the minif fans if they're too mean. Yeah, but yeah. it is. It's sometimes a crazy little phenomenon that we've got yeah. going on over here. But yeah, it's funny. Mm-hmm. It'll be th- these next couple months. Like this summer will be a very interesting time and transition period. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. yeah. now PFT's gone. A lot of change coming. A lot of change coming. Well, I think that wraps up. Yeah. 
our extra dose. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thank you guys for listening to us ramble on about a show we love watching and yeah. other stuff. Let us know what you want us to talk about next. Yeah, we, we oh, might yeah. just do a extra dose. We could just do a random extra dose where we just talk about nothing. We, we just let's chat. Do, let's just do a nothing show. A nothing show? We just talk about nothing but absolutely everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like So like the first yeah. hour of like a nano dose. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. I think I've heard of this concept before. Yeah. The yak. The yak. Um, <laughs> yeah. KFC radio. Like all of these. Yeah. Um, yeah, let us know what you want to talk about. And uh, love you guys. Love you. Bye. Bye.